So the things that made me buy a watch in 2020, the same as the things that made me buy a watch in 2019. Let's have a look. watches I'm Pete McConville. A couple of weeks ago I went back and looked at uh, my deal breakers video from 2019 and asked myself were the things that stopped me buying a watch in 2019 the same as the things that stopped me buying a watch today in 2020 and by and large they were. That probably should come as no surprise even by 2019 I was well practiced at not buying watches. I had been not buying hundreds of watches a week so what did catch me a little bit by surprise is that the things that made me buy a watch or the things that I said made me buy a watch in 2019 aren't true. In retrospect, they weren't actually the things that even made me buy a watch in 2019. What I had down as deal makers weren't. They weren't the things that made me reach into my wallet, drag out my credit card and lay my money down. What they were were the things that took a watch out of the morass of tens of thousands of watches you don't buy and put them on a short list. So what I labeled as deal makers were really short listing criteria. What actually does make me go the next step and put my money down, that remains a mystery. But let's get back to my shortlisting criteria slash deal breakers from last deal makers from last year. What are they and are they still relevant? Uh, well, what I said last year was the first thing was I liked watches that were timely, that reflected timeliness, not timelessness. I like a watch that is of a time. That doesn't mean that it has to be, if it's a new watch, it doesn't have to be of today. If you want to make a watch today that is quite clearly reflecting the 1950s and so you recreate a 1950s design and you say that this is a watch that captures the spirit of that time i'm on board that's fine that is still reflecting a time what I, what leaves me cold is the idea of timelessness I don't subscribe to the idea that there is such a thing as absolute beauty. I don't subscribe to the idea that there is a universal idea of what's good and what's bad. I think I'm very much an, an existentialist, a relativist, um, a subjectivist. I think that beauty is always between the relationship between you and the thing that you're looking at. And for me, time is essential in that kind of relationship. If there's no sense of time in that relationship, it's probably because you developed something that was a bit bland and a bit generic. And yeah, it's not really for me. Okay, uh, the other thing I said I wanted was evidence of thought. That I wanted to see evidence that someone had sat down very hard and thought, well, what am I trying to do with this product? In this case, what am I trying to do with this watch? What are my success factors? What are my constraints? And then how am I going to achieve that? And that remains true. I like watches which show that kind of sense of purpose in their, in their design. And I, I hate watches that don't have that sense of purpose. Um, but that's probably why, for example, a knockoff does so little for me because the only purpose of a knockoff is to print money by using someone else's thought. And that that's not going to do it for me. Um, I said last year that I really like tooliness in designs and that remains true. I think um, if you put aside my vintage watches, if I do look at vintage watches, I will go down the dress route, but that's largely because most vintage watches were dress watches. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of a bit rough around the edges. I'm a bit, you know, I, I don't dress up for much. I don't want my watches to dress up for much. My watches are work boots. They're protective jackets. They're, they're tools. Um, that's how I see pretty much everything about me and my life. Um, and I want my watches to be like that too. Um, 
I said last year that I really valued design and that remains true. And by design, I mean the aesthetics, the look, the feel of a watch. That's really important to me. Um, and one thing I would even double down on what I said last year was case design is particularly important to me. Now, I will buy, and I do own, and I love some watches of, of mine that have got other features that have but may have quite bland cases but if you've got a really nice really cunningly designed case then yeah, i'm gonna be you're gonna be getting onto my shortlist that's one of the reasons why i love for example those seiko sbdc divers the sumos and the new um 62 mass recreations i love the case design i love the look of those cases I said last year, and I continue to be attracted to watches which acknowledge their history, which fit into a history, but aren't constrained by that history. So the idea that a watch can grow and develop, and it's probably related to this idea of timeliness. The idea that, for example, a watch may have been developed in the 1960s, that line can continue, but the watch could actually change quite radically to still to reflect the time that it's in while retaining some of the core values or the core ideals of that original that that original type one thing i said last year i didn't care about much were the complications and that remains true i did mention last year that um, a gmt is a complication that is going to get my attention that definitely remains true and if anything i've even more hardened up on that um, yeah, I, if I'm doing a search on watches, if I do go to Chrono 24, I have, I have a couple of searches which have the, that GMT function built in. So I will be routinely tracking certain watches specifically because they're GMTs. Um, one of the things I said that I loved were watches that were hard to find, but easy to buy. That absolutely remains true and in fact um, I'm not sure if I said it last year but I, there's an expression I've heard uh, which is you know that we should aim for a demo an aristocracy of taste but a democracy of access and that concept just just fills me with joy I love that idea that says I don't have to be a better doctor or a better lawyer or a better accountant or a better stockbroker or I don't have to have better parents and inherit more money um, in order to get a better watch collection all I have to do is pay more attention to watches all I have to do is you know learn and study and and appreciate more interesting things about watches and then buy them one thing that i've definitely hardened up on is um i i look for watches i will try and get watches onto a short list which grow my collection um last year this was kind of vague i kind of wanted watches that fit with my overall collection but last year was like early days of the solar system large puddles of gas that haven't quite coalesced into planets yet i'm not sure if i've completely got those planets in place but i am i'm pretty close right now if i was if i had to tell you what my collection was I could tell you with a fair degree of precision. Um, and now that very definitely informs what I'm gonna collect, what I'm gonna buy. Um, so I've got an idea of what I want my collection to be. That shapes, for example, my Chrono 24 search criteria. Um, that really, it doesn't totally limit. I do allow myself the ability to go off off list, if you like, and look at other things. But yeah, I really do focus on not just individual watches, because there are lots of gorgeous watches out there, but how that watch fits with the larger collection I'm trying to build. There were a couple of things that I was after last year that would have got you onto a short list that these days probably won't. Um, the first is uh, last year I was very big on the idea of carefree watches. So 
I have in my deal breakers that I won't buy a watch that is so expensive that um, I worry about it. That remains true. I very much have a, a ceiling that I don't feel comfortable going beyond. But last year, I very much had an emphasis on going as close to the floor as I could. I wanted to get as cheap as I could so as I didn't have to worry at all about the watches. That has definitely kind of gone away. I don't really look to be at the bottom end of my envelope anymore. I'm happy to go up as high as I feel comfortable as long as I don't exceed a ceiling. So that part of my my shortlisting has kind of changed. The other thing was last year I was talking a lot about watches which opened new doors and made me go new places and learn all sorts of new things. And I think that reflected the idea that I was still figuring out what I wanted my collection to be. Now I would still look at lots of watches that um, I won't necessarily want to collect. In fact, if anything, I do that even more now. But I don't, those watches, I do that because I want to know more about watches, not because I'm trying to shortlist watches I might actually buy. So I think one of the things that's changed is I've gone from looking at watches as prospective purchases to continuing to look at a wide variety of watches because I'm interested in watches and separate that from the the task of looking at watches I'm, I'm looking at collecting myself. So that's it. That's probably my look at what I called deal breakers but were actually shortlisting criteria last year and looking at whether they're still a valid shortlisting criteria for me now. I'm actually happy that I've changed from last year. I remain really happy that what would stop me buying a watch last year would still stop me buying a watch. But I'm also very happy that what I thought would make me buy a watch isn't the same anymore. What about yourself? If you go back and look at the sorts of things that you thought would make you buy a watch last year, are they still the same? Are you, are you a well-seasoned collector? You know what you like, you know what you're gonna buy, or are you finding that that process of appreciating versus buying a watch um, and then ultimately buying a watch is changing and how is that so? I'd be interested. Leave a comment below. We can have a chat about it. I've been Pete McConville. This has been Not So Obvious Watches. You'll notice I don't do wrist checks. If you're interested in my watches and my, what, what I wear, I have got a state of the collection coming, but it's probably a couple of weeks or months away. Uh, go check out my Instagram and I wear a new watch every day. So if you go back through a couple of weeks, you'll see most of my watches. Hit the like and subscribe button. Help me grow this channel and I'll see you later. Bye.